What's good? It's your boy, Tara Money, and today I'm going to talk about my hero. My hero, you know, so he's like Batman and Superman to me. And I'm really happy and grateful that he's the Xbox savior, which I'm talking about the CEO, the boss, Phil Spencer. You know what I'm saying? A lot of Xbox uh, uh, broadcasters and supporters and fans, you know, had this meeting a long time ago where... Phil Spencer and everybody else in the Xbox team telling about the future of Xbox. And with this article, you know, I, I look at all articles, but this one specifically, you know, I want to speak out of because I think this is the one, this is the meeting that Phil Spencer had or a video call that Phil Spencer have, you know, with Cole Eastwood and uh, Diller Games. And, you know, I can name those two. When it comes to other guys, it's hard for me to pronounce their names. You know, I, I can't read that good, but I'm going to try my best to read this article, though. But, um, you know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is that Phil Spencer, he's not familiar with the metaverse. Even though his, his boss, is the CEO of Microsoft, is when it comes to him knowing about the metaverse and having knowledge about it. But Phil Spencer himself don't know too much about it. You know what I'm saying? And so when it really comes down to it, he got he kind of like, need someone like me, you know what I'm saying, to, per, to create a metaverse for Xbox, similar to PlayStation Home, if Xbox is willing to do something like PlayStation Home, but, you know, it gotta be amazing, though, but, you know, it can be like a PlayStation Home, but, you know, I'm gonna put it in my book, though, to explain that in a way that I can explain it in written words instead of through talking, because it's hard for me to explain certain things, but, you know, let's get into this article anyway. Phil Spencer delivered the ultimate pitch for Xbox Future. Xbox Chief Phil Spencer made headlines this week by laying out his company position on cloud gaming subscription in the fri- in the fri- fright 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 uh, acquisition of Activision Blizzard. I'm sorry, I don't know how to read this stuff. Xbox boss Phil Spencer set the stage. Microsoft has an ambition plan to grow its gaming business from primarily Xbox consoles to cloud services, subscription platforms, and screens of all sizes. And if the Game Pass platform is the engine to make it happen, the acquisition of Activision Blizzard is a major source of fuel. On Wednesday, Xbox boss Phil Spencer took the stage at the WSJ Tech Live conference where he made news on a series of strategies or areas for X, for Microsoft, including Game Pass, cloud streaming, and the company's approach to pricing. Uh, Spencer, a uh, price, price, uh, approach to pricing. Spencer, a master of blending off the off the cuff, the the meter with especially extra in extra as to as to interview answers made clear that. While regulators are concerned over its nearly seventy billion Activision bid, the company is relentlessly focused on growing its audience beyond the stagnant console market. Spencer came prepared to make news, speaking to reporters Sarah Needlesman, Spencer Dow Doodle Doodle Doodle. Out some key figures and announcements around areas Microsoft particularly is focused on in gaming. He disclosed the Game Pass is in fact profitable and accounts for at most 15% of the Xbox business content and ser- services division, which will give Game Pass an annual revenue uh, annual annual revenue. Of around 1.9 billion. God damn. Out of 15% get 1.9 billion. It will go to either 3 or 4. Once Activision Blizzard. You know it's finally part of the Xbox family. And stuff like that. So it will go upper than that. It will go more. It it probably go up to 20%. You know what I'm saying. But I think that will be around 2 billion I guess. But you know. Let's wait and see later on next year. Game Pass. As an overall part of our content and services revenue is probably 15%, Spencer said. As transcribed by The Verge, I don't think it gets bigger than that. I think the overall revenue grows. So 15% of 
of a bigger number, but we don't have this feature where I think 50 or 70% of our revenue comes from subscriptions. Spencer have t tampered his language around Game Pass, clarifying more recently that while Microsoft will like an Xbox app on every device, it will also more real realistically need to rely on a diverse revenue stream. In other words, it's not putting all its eggs in the Game Pass basket. Spencer also said Game Pass growth is slow is slowing on console, mainly because at some point you reach everybody on console that wants to subscribe. Spencer said while growth on PC have been incredible on on prices, Spencer said Microsoft is keeping them at a current level through the holiday season. But th but that it but that it expect it will have to rise console game and subscription prices. Which I don't have a problem with because, like I said, I don't travel. I don't have the car. I'm usually on foot when I go somewhere. So and I don't use Uber no more. So we all knew it was. I didn't know it was going to add game and console, but you know they're going to have to raise the price up, y'all. And you know what I'm saying that's one thing. But you know that's one thing. We we've held price on our console. We held price on games. And our subscription, I don't think we'll be able to do that forever. He said, I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things. Spencer was speaking to players, but also to Sony and regulators, regulators, regulators too. The most affordable credit right now to Microsoft acquisition of my Activision Blizzard is a UK competition and market authority. authority. Which have expressed concerns of that Microsoft will use this deal to harm PlayStation, which is not true. Thanks to the thanks to the ponies, man, for up there having a panic attack over Call of Duty being owned by Microsoft and also having, a, you know, what I'm saying like it's the ponies, man. But at the same time, you know, I, like I said, I used to be a PlayStation fanboy as well too. Yes, I had a PlayStation One, but at the same time, I was kind of abusing it. You know, I was a kid. What I mean by abusing it, I always left them on because I like to see the cutscenes, and be, especially in Tekken, like Tekken Two, I always love to see the cutscenes in the game. But you know, I down there abused my console. When I got my original Xbox, I also abused that as well. Then when it comes to the point of abusing my 360. You know what I'm saying? I got the red ring. But when it came down to my Xbox One S, I didn't abuse it that much because I was working. But also, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to live for the, I was trying to be out in the world and stuff. But when the pandemic comes, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't use my, my Xbox One S. I am using it now more often now, but for the content on my channel. But, you know, when it came down to using these consoles, when I, when I had a PlayStation, yeah, I'd abused it. By playing it too much and leaving it on too much, and that's not good for your console. But lucky that um that when it comes to Xbox One, and Xbox Series, kind of, like I said, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty and the original Xbox are are retro. When it comes to Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles, they're always going to be modern because they can turn itself off if you're not on there, and that's one thing about them. But I don't have no hate towards PlayStation or Sony. It's just that the ponies, the fanboys, there's some toxic people in Xbox too. There are some toxic, I don't speak for those. I speak for those who are more open about this. But I am a fanboy, but I have nothing against Nintendo or PlayStation or any anybody trying to come into the business. But let's continue. But in his comments Wednesday, Spencer tried to make clear that he's not so much interested interested in snatching away Sony's consumers. Instead, the Xbox Watch want to further unshakable Microsoft business from the console market and grow beyond it, primarily to mobile, which I play on my tablet. If, if you see my gameplays, I'm playing it from my tablet, you know what I'm saying? So if it wasn't for an Xbox Cloud Gaming, I would not be able to screen record. And it wasn't for screen recording on Samsung because, you know, Apple, I think they had it first, but, you know, well, I think I don't know which one had them first. Maybe both did, but when it comes to Samsung, uh, they're the ones at a screen recorder. I can, and when it comes to having the media sound, also the media and the mic sound, adding my voice to it, like I'm finna make a career out of gaming 
Even though I'm even though I'm not talking to my modern warfare too because I'm trying to raise up my level, but I am going to talk next during this weekend. I'm basically not going to talk during my gameplays in the multiplayer, but next weekend I definitely will. But when I start ground wars, when I first started, I'm not going to talk. But you know that's that's another story. But basically, what I'm trying to say is you know he's trying to say grow beyond it, be primarily to mobile. I play on my tablet, you know what I mean? I definitely play on my tablet, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, console is always going to be around, but I think Xbox is going to move beyond console because the thing is, they're going to start like the Xbox Keystone. That's a streaming box. So when it comes down to it, they always focus on creating streaming box and all that stuff, and that's going to be your main console of choice, to be honest. This opportunity is really about mobile for us, Spencer said of Activision Activision deal. When you think about 3 billion people playing video games, there's only about 200 million households on, on console. It definitely tr- is, is definitely true today that the largest gaming platform on the planet, which is, which is a mobile phone, is, is controlled by two companies, Google and Apple. He added it is it's imperative for our business, there's no way that you can you that you succeed as a gaming company without access to mobile players. In developing market like Latin America and Southeast Asia, mobile represent access to a right right audience, especially consumers who don't have the ability to buy a console or PC or don't have access to the sta- stable bandwidth. Dennis Yale. Gaming Inside Lee, an analyst firm, Senior Tower, told me, I also still believe that cloud gaming is in the cards for the future. Even with the recent shutdown of Google Stadia, an accessibility and developing market will be a key aspect for potential viability, he added. The growth of Game Pass depend on big acquisition. While Microsoft has uh, has a pipeline of game coming from its internal studios, many of its biggest upcoming releases are games from companies it require, including Bethesda, Starfield, and K. Redfall in the upcoming Elder Scroll installment. In regulatory, in regulatory feeling and public statement, Microsoft and Spencer have stressed the importance of using content acquisition to make Game Pass more appealing and to help it compete better with market and lease a leader of Sony, which has more than twice the install base of the Xbox platform. By delivering even more value to players, we hope to continue growing Game Pass, extending its appeal to mobile phones and any connected device, Spencer wrote in a public plea to regulators last month. Additionally, Activision Blizzard at the operates a number of, of, of hugely, hugely successful mobile games, including Call of Duty Mobile, Cat, Candy Crush, and Diablo Immortal. And in the response to UK regulatory, Microsoft Credit Credit characterized its position in the mobile market, the largest sector of the global game industry by a wide right margin, as nowhere. Mobile expertise is in a rad, rarely changing environment is invulnerable, he said. With keen Microsoft obtain a prim- a primary game maker with extensive experience in live, off, and free-to-play monetization, as well as the data that comes with it. We have to break that du- duopoly of only two star- storefronts on the largest platforms. We also invested a lot in our cloud streaming. Spencer said at WSJ Live, but if you take a long-term bet, which we are doing, that we will be able to get access to players on the largest platform players play on. We want to be in a position where content players and storefronts capability take advantage of it. Sony regulators are Microsoft only concerned. The Xbox business faces a number of key challenges to achieving Spencer's dream of putting Microsoft games on as many platforms as possible. For one, with Game Pass user acquisition approaching the ceiling of, of on consoles, Microsoft is missing its target targets. The company grew the service in f- 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 twenty twenty two, which ended 
in June by 28%. That fell far short of the 73% goal that dictate did that dictate dedicate dictates companies executive performance uh, bonuses. Uh, to reporters by HBO Research today that the second year in a row that Game Pass has missed its growth target. One obvious culprit is major games delay early this year. Microsoft delayed Bethesda, Starfield, and other exclusives to 2023. These delays contribute to subscribers current on as Xbox, I mean as Game Pass members decide to let their subscription lapse until the catalog improve in the future. Part of part of Microsoft's ambition to grow Game Pass beyond Xbox is cloud streaming, but the company put a streaming hardware product on ice earlier this year and decided to partner instead of with Samsung for a smart TV app. Uh, decided to partner instead with Samsung. For, okay, I, I, I thought I read. I misread. I thought I misread that. Keystone was the code name of something we were incubating in, internally, which was a streaming console. So there's no local gameplay, low cost plug in, plug it into your TV, and you'll be able to stream Xbox games. Spencer said at WSJ Live, "Will will we do a streaming device at some point? I suspect we will, but I think it's years away." Without dedicated streaming hardware, Microsoft has to rely on devices controlled by the very duality. Spencer said his company is trying to break and break, and Apple has only grown bolder in recent months with regard to collecting its App Store fees from developers despite mounting regulatory pressure. Spencer co- co- covered a staggering amount of ground in a single interview. And it's clear Microsoft sees clear benefits in having the most high-profile public place of Xbox retire rate, the company gaming position amid a fierce regulatory battle. It makes sense if Game Pass is profitable and yet growth is slowing. Perhaps regulatory may see more credibility, credibility in Microsoft uh, uh, augmented augment that it needs fresh content to expand. And if mobile is truly the next frontier for Xbox and not just the stale Xbox, stale stall console console market, then Microsoft may seem less like a multi-trillion dollar tech titan bullying the competition and more like an underdog trying to play catch up against incumbents. incumbents. It is in some way in some ways a matter of a perspective. But Spencer's savvy contextualizing of the gaming business is all about ensuring that Microsoft points of view look as conceiving as it can be. In twenty in twenty twenty one, there were two hundred thirty six million cyber. Op- Is that it? That's it. So basically, uh, man, when you get sucked into these articles, you read the whole thing. You don't know what you're doing. So basically, what Phil Spencer is saying is, is that they are expanding to mobile, which means for the sake of the whole world, you know, becoming a you know, when it comes down to being an Xbox fan, let me say this. When it comes down to being an Xbox punk, it's not all about, you know what I'm saying, playing on console all the time, even though that's the traditional way. You know, what Phil Spencer is doing is trying to put, you know, Xbox on every screen device out there, which is 2D. When it comes to the metaverse and, and cloud gaming and adding the metaverse into cloud gaming, no matter where you be, you're always going to be stuck on your screen and glued into the screen whenever you're in a digital world. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to VR, uh, when it comes to extended reality, that might be too much by adding the digital world into the physical world. But when it comes to really just dabbling into it, that's when 2D comes in. But when it comes to living full force in it, then that's when we got 3D or VR headsets. 
You know what I'm saying? Even though PlayStation got VR, but at the same time, they're using it for gaming purposes. The only thing that's using uh, VR for uh, anything other than it's really a uh, matter. You know what I'm saying? But what Phil Spencer is saying that they're focusing on expanding into mobile and expanding into smart TVs with no console required. And what kind of smart TVs? Only Samsung got the app for Xbox on there. And so on and so forth. So basically what I'm trying to say is, is that this was the meeting that Phil Spencer had with Xbox uh, fans and broadcasters and creators and so on and so forth. Basically broadcasters that who are fans of Xbox and talking about Xbox. Xbox is, is expanding right now. Like I said, if they didn't add cloud gaming, I would not be pushing uh, gaming content. Because of screen recorder on Samsung Galaxy the devices, you know, for me to, you know, the screen cord... And stuff like that is it's a it's amazing. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that when it really comes down to it, though, you know, so I'm able to give you gaming content when it comes to Tekken 8, Street Fighter 6, even Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. You know, so I'm able to do that because of Xbox Cloud Gaming. You know, just imagine, and I'm gaining new subscribers. Just because of me streaming, I even Fortnite. I love playing Fortnite because Fortnite is a definition of a metaverse. You know what I'm saying? So basically what I'm trying to say is that Phil Spencer is trying to open people up who's into all sorts of games. And also also when it comes to Game Pass, when it comes to Game Pass, you know, thanks to Netflix being a dominator of movie subscription, thanks to Spotify being a dominator of music subscription. When it comes to game Xbox Game Pass, see PlayStation, Nintendo, those are Japanese companies. They're not doing what America is doing. When it comes to Spotify and Netflix, you know what I'm saying? They can do that with subscriptions. And when it comes to Game Pass, that's an amazing subscription. I wonder what they're gonna do with the original Xbox and the 360 games that I got on my Xbox console. If they can really make that into remote play, let's hope that they can make them games remote play. Cause I know it's some games, but it's not all the three. It's definitely not all the 360 and the original Xbox games that I have. You know what I'm saying? If only they allow them games to stream. That's when they're really close to cloud gaming. If they allow those type of games to be, be remote play, so I can really put on my channel and really play them for y'all. But, um, you know, when it comes to Phil Spencer, you know, he's my hero. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to Spider-Man or Superman or even Batman, I look at him as, I look at him, I look at Phil Spencer as all of those because he's, the, he's an Xbox savior. You know what I'm saying? Even though he saved the console, but he's not all about the console. I mean, they the stadia, you know, shutting down. Now he got his foot in the door with the whole being dominated by dominating the cloud game. I mean, they're already dominating the cloud gaming, being a mainstream console giant, but... You know, when it really comes down to it, I know PlayStation is always going to be ahead of Xbox. I know that when it comes to console sales and stuff like that. But PlayStation is not on a level where Xbox is. PlayStation is going to continue to come out with consoles and continue to dominate, you know, console market here and definitely here in America and even in Canada. You know what I'm saying? Maybe in Mexico too, but I don't know. But I mean, yeah, in Mexico too. I didn't mean to say that, but Mexico too. But you know, when it really comes down to it, though, when it comes to Phil Spencer, though, he's an Xbox savior, man. And when it comes down to him being an Xbox savior, you know what I'm saying? That's why I call him my hero. He's always going to be my hero. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing I look at Bill Gates as my god because if it wasn't for Bill Gates creating the Xbox, you know, I would never became his fan. But since he created Xbox and I fell in love with my original Xbox. You know, I'm an Xbox fanboy since day one. And that's why I'm trying to create a religion for Xbox within the metaverse. Because when it comes to cloud gaming, as for those who are dabbling in the metaverse, for those who are in VR headsets that are fully immersed and fully hardcore in the metaverse. And that's what it really comes down to. This is your boy, Tab Money, Fan and Son Off. And that's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. I want to put out there. And I hope you enjoy this. Episode. When they come to this, what he said, what I just read right there, even though I wasn't perfect reading it. What Phil Spencer just read right there is what he told to everybody else that was part that's part of the Xbox uh fan base and stuff like that. So this is your boy's our money.